Good Tuesday morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and get airborne with our uh, joint solo and uh, primary brief. Appreciate your flexibility yesterday. It was uh, drove from the Green Mountain State all the way down to Boston and then uh, flew home last night uh, with the family. So day of travel yesterday. Looks like I didn't uh, miss much in the market, man. These uh, I've completely uh, shifted my sales, man. Um, talking to a lot of people, <clears throat> I just, it's not. There's a shit show coming. Uh, what happened in September-ish and still going on right now is the beginning uh, of the end. I'm going to try and unwind my Amazon. Um, it, Thanksgiving is going to be a shit show, folks. Pe people can't even afford a turkey. I mean, it, let alone start spending. We'll talk about supply constraint issues and all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, I, I just don't I, – I feel – I feel bad coming, uh, not good at all, and I'm usually pretty damn good with that stuff. Christina was a great trip. Saw my boy last Parents Weekend. My God, the four years uh, flew. Um, bl don't blink, right? So uh, saw him uh, play. He played University of Maine Saturday night. Scored a goal in the last ten seconds with us right on the glass. His celebration was uh, better than the goal, uh, so it was funny. Uh, but it was great. Good, good to be in the Green Mountain State, up seeing the leaves change and and stuff like that. I just love, I love Vermont. Uh, it's just a beautiful state, and it's an interesting state because it's a barbell. Bernie Sanders, Black Lives Matter, Trans Lives Matter, all sorts of stuff on the side of the road, and F Joe Biden, Second Amendment gun rack people. It's literally a bipolar state. You're either <clears throat> extremely right or extremely left uh, in Vermont. Uh, it, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting state, uh, but had a blast. It was good to get away. <clears throat> it, it really, it, it is a, uh, it is a, uh, bipolar country. You're right, Karen. David, I read that this is anticipated to be a very strong earnings season. David, for every article you find like that, I'll find 20 that say the exact opposite. I'm telling you how I feel, man. Uh, so remember the last earnings uh, Amazon was the bellwether, right? I predicted it within $6.75. I said, Amazon's going to get hammered. What? They're going to print money. I had buddies who just got destroyed last Amazon earnings. You're an idiot, Wiz. It's $4,4200 bucks after earnings. I'm like, okay. Uh, so, David, I, I don't necessarily agree. <clears throat> so, or you know what, David? I will agree. We might have strong earnings. Who cares? Remember, folks, earnings call. Let, let's let's let me give you my earnings briefs. Earnings uh, briefs are a 50-50, man. Half the earnings call is what looking in the left side of the chart or the rearview mirror. Nobody cares. So that's why it's funny when you see <clears throat> after when a stock reports earnings, right? And you see like it move in after market hours or pre market, whatever. And then all of a sudden, the dude or the lady gets on the horn and goes, "Oh my God, the future sucks." And the you know, blowout earnings and the stock's down 20% in after hours. So remember, folks, it's all about the forward look. Nobody cares what you did last quarter. We'll care for that part of the call. And then I don't care anymore. Remember, once something's known, it's known. Then you pick up your binoculars and go, tell me about the future. And does anybody think that any CEO is going to get on and go, the future looks bright? Our taxes are going up, folks. I'm talking about as a business owner. I'm going to get destroyed with taxes. Am I going to eat that or am I going to pass it on to the consumer? Oh, and by the way, we're having supply chain issues. We can't get shit out of the port. Uh, gas is through the roof, so my trucks cost a shitload of money. Blah, blah. So we'll get into it, guys. But, <clears throat> you know, this is this is going to be very, 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 very interesting. Uh, remember, if you want to join the Hunters, we got a bunch of folks, new folks over in the Hunters, which is great. Uh, I put that link in the chat box if you want to sign up. It's uh, $4.97 a month, which is a steep discount to what it used to be because a bunch of people asked for it. And that's what I like doing. Uh, everybody get their book. If you, if you dropped in a nice review on the podcast, uh, everybody should have gotten their book by now. Uh, do me a favor. If I'm actually going at uh, four o'clock today to do episode five, can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. Uh, but I'm starting to delve deeper into uh, in, into the medicine, the journey, uh, and stuff like that. 
uh, Mitch, where's uh, Mitch? Hopefully Mitch is in here. Mitch and I are meeting on Thursday uh, with the producer. Uh, and we're talking about a movie, man. Documentary, movie, whatever it's called, uh, whatever we're going to do. We have a working title, which I'll share with you down the road. <clears throat> um, so a lot of good stuff going on. Really, really good good stuff internally with you guys and everything like that. But the market's a shit show, man. Uh, I, I told the on my mastermind call yesterday from Vermont, spotty sell coverage, but uh, I got the gist of it, man. Everybody, remember a lot of my buds uh, and gals and whatever you want to call them, um, they tell you after the fact, right? Somebody usually doesn't roll in our group like we're going to dump 100,000 shares of Apple this afternoon. That's just not how it works. So we get to hear after the fact, which is right, right? You can't. A lot of us signed agreements and this and that. You can't. You can't do that. Um, you know, that's why when I was the CEO of the Options News Network, we had the Options Cocktail because I'd take all these traders out to a bar on Friday after the market closed, get them liquored up, and then we'd hear everything. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move, though. Um, <clears throat> China's insane. Uh, did you see Kyle Bass this morning on CNBC? Uh, if the dude was president, he, like, declared war on China this morning. The guy, I, I haven't heard a more stark uh, somebody, if you can find the clip, I don't know if they posted it yet. Usually they turn those clips around pretty good. He was like, you know, first of all, uh, I can't stand Andrew Ross Sorkin. The, the dude's just nails on a chalkboard. He is your typical limousine liberal, silver spoon boy in his mouth, like a a Anderson Cooper. All those, they need a good ass kicking, those kids. Um, but ripping apart the other day, uh, you know, well, we'll get into the airline thing in a second, but he was on, you know, going after Kyle Bass. Uh, you know, he's like, he, he it, so he are, he gave up Taiwan. He's like, oh, I, I don't want to sound bad, but he's like, it's already a foregone conclusion. CNBC is the Chinese news broadcasting company. He's like, it's over with. I mean, well, I, I don't want to, you know, sound like that, but essentially no U.S. president is going to go to war to defend Taiwan. So Xi's just going to take it. I, I mean, sorry, Taiwan. You see all these people bow to Taiwan, man, from LeBron James. Uh, I mean, hell, Maverick. Maverick. Uh, they pulled the damn Taiwan flag off Maverick's leather jacket. Google the first leather jacket he wore. And then this one, they pulled the flag of Taiwan off Maverick's jacket. Breaking news. You ready for this? We are still the Maverick event has been moved to May because that's when the movie's coming out. We are still doing our event on uh, November 20th. Might even be better. Uh, so we're doing, we're, we're doing the Maverick. We'll, we'll have an email with all this, but we moved the event down to Opelika Airfield to the Coast Guard uh, station, to the Coast Guard Air Station. Why? Because they have security and I'm going to get, we're, we're calling in the fleet, baby. We're probably going to get some Super Hornets, a couple E2s, I got some Air Force guys putting up the bat signal. Um, this thing's going to be, it's going to be even bigger. So keep your Maverick or keep your November 20th stuff because we're doing, we're actually doing a, a, a joint event with the uh, Veterans Prostate Prostate Cancer uh, Foundation. A buddy of mine, Bing Crosby, easy call sign, uh, old Tomcat guy, Hornet guy, uh, Top Gun dude. He runs that foundation. You ready for this? Among veterans who are diagnosed with cancer. 40% increase in suicide rate. So imagine being a veteran dealing with all your shit sandwiches and then you get diagnosed with cancer. So we are doing a joint event. Still going to get my uh, <clears throat> a, a bunch of cool people to show up, including all you guys. So, um, oh yeah, Ken, my old stomping grounds, Coast Guard Air Station, Miami, 86 to 91. That's awesome. You bet, Sledge, it is an excellent partnership. Ted, I'll give you the link. Uh, well, Top Gun, Top Gun, Fighter Foundation, Top Gun, Fighter. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're keeping that event, uh, cause I talked to Bing and he's like, dude, let's just keep, um, uh, slash event, movie event. Yeah. Um, cause it's insane. He's like, dude, uh, the, the, the rates go through the roof, uh, with people, with veterans who are diagnosed with any type of cancer, let alone prostate cancer. And oh, by the way, folks, not that we want to 
turn this into this. Flight suit is still mandatory. You got it, Bob. Uh, <clears throat> for 15 years, I sat behind an APG 65 and 73 radar. Feet behind one of the most powerful emitters like on the planet. You're going to tell me that, oh, and of course, all the engineers are like, okay, well, but you're kind of, the energy just goes forward. If any of you have ever seen a Prowler, an EA-6B Prowler from the Navy, four dudes and, and or women in that aircraft, gold, they had gold tinted canopies. If you see, if you looked at it in the right uh, reflection, the canopies are gold to try and shield them from the radiation. So you can't tell me that not only my tinnitus, which is debilitating, uh, and, and a lot of the en energy um, didn't like, you know, didn't come back. The airport is Opalaka. It's called Opa, O-P-A, Laka, L-O-C-K-A. Uh, it's north of Miami. It's in between Fort Lauderdale uh, and Miami. I'd still stay at the Dalmar, which is a hotel that almost everybody is staying there. Um, so Jack, it's been moved to May. May. Exactly. Sled said, it's all bullshit. The lobes on the radar go 360 degrees. I've lost too many Eagle Bros to cancer, all because of the radar. Exactly. All right. So let's get going. Uh, I just wanted to break the news that we're still doing our uh, November 20th event, doing it with the Veterans uh, Prostate Cancer Foundation, and then we will still do Maverick. Uh, but we're actually going <clears> to, <throat> instead of the IMAX in Fort Lauderdale, we're going to do it at the IPIC in Boca. We're running the entire place. They have like eight theaters because the IPIC, you get your cozy chair, you get a blanket, you get booze on your thing and all sorts of stuff. And then we'll go to a hangar party at the Boca Airport. So a lot of good news coming with that. Just wanted to share it. All right. Anyway, somebody find the CNBC clip with uh, Kyle Bass because it was the most bearish thing I've ever heard on China. Have you seen what's been going on for the past couple months? Over the weekend, Xi Jinping's going after all their banks. Ha uh, over the weekend, he also said there will be not one news, quote, news agency in this country anymore that is not controlled by the party. This is it, man. I, in the past three to four months, we literally have seen, geez, that's weird. Who got elected recently? But anyway, Xi Jinping has gone full. I'm going to, you know, Vladimir Putin get a third term and rule for life. This dude is cracking down on everything. I bring up the Kyle Bass thing because he had a great point. He's like, um, it, it, you know, uh, yeah, it, it's I've never seen anything like this in my entire lifetime since, you know, when I was born, obviously, it was the height of the Cold War, 68, December 31st, um, New Year's baby. I've never seen anything like this. And we're ignoring it. I talked about the Evergrande. We talked about Evergrande not being a black swan event. We were right. The market used it, not the market, I'm sorry, CNBC and other idiots used this like, oh my God, it's Evergrande. That's why we imploded. No, it's not. Then why do we keep imploding? More Evergrande? No, come on. Um, and these dips aren't being bought, guys. How many times have I told you markets don't live behind between moving averages? This is a shit show in here, man. We get paid to project our thoughts forward in space and time. So we can influence our trading instead of reacting to it, right? Well, guess what? Ain't nothing bullish out here into the future. China is becoming a shit show. Kyle Bass said, we might not go to war. No U.S. president, Republican or Democrat, is probably going to order forces to risk their lives to save the island nation of Taiwan. I get it. However, comma, Kyle Bass is right. In his interview, he's like, the next day, th until China they will do this eventually, gets fully off the dollar, they're still on the dire dollar. We could drop financial nukes the second they invade or did something against Taiwan. World mark, first of all, world markets would implode on their own because of military action against Taiwan. Taiwan semiconductor, it's a democratic, I call it, country. China overlords listening to me, it is. Why do we sell arms to Taiwan and not the other Xinjiang, Xinjiang provinces. It's just, it's stupid, right? At least France has the balls. They sent an ambassador recently or whatever it was, and China's face melted off. 
we had any guts, we'd do the same thing. I reported last week that guess what? We've had some, I'm shocked, special forces advisors in Taiwan, um, you know, doing stuff. Anyway, uh, this is, why am I rambling about this stuff in China and everything like that? Because that's out here. I have no idea what's going on, man. Nobody really has clarity into China, and that's a problem. We'll find the clip. We'll, we'll we'll get it. But it was really good, man. The dude's smart. I like Kyle Bass. He is part of the smart money. Although I think he was one of the <clears throat> subtle, not shameless plug, but subtle plug for my book. I think he was one of the ones. Remember at the height of the COVID uh, crash? What happened? Dudes like Kyle Bass said what? Shut it down. Close the market. For a month or so. Let it, yeah, he was. Maybe I should reread my own book. But I remember uh, he was one of the guys that said what? Oh, is this it? Let me, Cheatin. I think Cheatin might get the gold star. Let me see if, uh, copy. Let me see if this is it. Well, I'm not going to listen to it. You guys can listen to it. But um, We start socializing amongst our government, the fact that we have the economic nuclear button. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, we have an economic nuclear button. I'll, I'll give you this link. Good job, Cheatin. Cheatin found it. Listen to this on your own. I've never – this was this was fantastic. I don't know if it's the whole interview, but we should uh, – Karen says it's – well, that's 2.45, 2 minutes and 45. Um, I, I, I uh, could not be more bearish on China. Remember – Uncle Wiz is the guy who likes to remind you that you got to be bullish on a country that does whatever you, it wants in time. But these short term, you know, they wake up one day and, you know, hey, if you're not a Chinese company, get out. I'm telling you, guys, I'm telling you, I will be right on this. If I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say if when Chai Wan, it, Xi said this and Kyle Bass covers this in his video. He did. He does a better job than I'm about to do. In that January, February, whenever it was speech that Xi gave, he said his mission objective is to reunite Taiwan with China. He's like, I am going to do it. We ignored it because we had all Fauci telling us not to you know, go outside. Does, do Democrats – well, they don't. But anyway, do people watch TV like Fauci every weekend, tens of millions of Americans? Watching college football, hundred. Did you see the Alabama A and M game? Jack, that's one of Jack's schools. He's going to look at. Holy shit! They stormed the field. A hundred and eight, whatever. One hundred ten thousand people can fit in that stadium. Fauci. I don't know if it'll be safe to get together by Christmas. Do you even? Uh, uh, whatever. I can't. But guys, um, I, I could not be more exactly. Go Brandon. Uh, I would not I, – I, this thing's going to implode. I think Skaggs was doing this the other day in the in the Max Afterburner group. There are some uh, Afterburner folks getting ready to pound this into the dirt. I would eventually be bullish on China, but remember with trading options, we can be what? We can be bipolar and so can I. Uh, we can be very, very bullish into the future and then short-term bearish, but – there's just some bad going on in China. In in our Hong, uh, the one dude from our in our group from Hong Kong, man, he's he's like, you guys really don't have no clue what's going on uh, around the world uh, in here. Anyway, uh, let's get going. Um, <clears throat> we talked, you know, I said put this on your radar last week. I said what? Oil. Keep an eye on oil. Uh, this is going to be a big week. Everybody who's got a brokerage account most likely has a brokerage account that does this. Where's the uh, trading? Nope. Calendar. There we go. Look at that. We got its earnings, baby. Look at this. Green is BM, uh, BMO, before market open, AMO, after market, AMC, after market close. So we're here they come, man. The financials are Delta's tomorrow, Blackstone. We're, we're going to get some financial city, <clears throat> Schwab, Goldman Sachs on Friday. That's interesting on a Friday. Um, that's either really good or really bad. So here we go. Earnings are uh, on tap. I'm telling you, man. This I'm done with inflation, 
uh, and I'm moving, I'm making a strategic shift. What are you talking about, Wiz? Inflation is on fire. I know, but here's where we're ending up. It's turning into, folks, we are turning into Japan circa 1990s until today, essentially, this economic malaise uh, that they have. Did you see the jobs number Friday morning? I did. Steve Leisman on CNBC was like, uh, he's, it, it, I, I've done that before. I'm like, is there, a, is there a digit missing? Horrific miss. What did I see throughout Vermont? Took a picture of it. I posted it on Instagram yesterday. The we, our burrito place, man. Um, nobody, you know, we cannot find workers. Please, uh, you know, we're doing the best we can. Please don't, you know, hate us. Jobs everywhere, and people aren't taking them. This is how republics end, folks. You and I are going to get taxed out the ass to pay for people who don't work. Well, they're afraid of COVID or Delta, whatever, whatever the, the Democrat. It's where I'm from in Philly and Jersey. Paying people not to work is called a bribe. But we go, folks, we are running into stagflation, folks. We are really, I'm not, not we, the markets are misinterpreting the data. This is what you're seeing here, guys, is the markets are starting to catch up to where we are mentally. Everybody at Top Gun Options knows this stuff. Exactly. And then we're going to fire people who are working because they don't get a vaccine. Once again, I will say this, guys, because when I say this, a lot of people actually stop and pause. If the government can force into your body something you don't want what can't they do we've reached the ultimate power of the government you put this in your body or we're going to destroy you this ain't 1984 folks this is 2021 somebody tell me is that horrific don't want this in my body. You do it or I'm going to destroy you. No jab, no work. It's awful. So um, what's even more awful, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that every day on the news um, are lies. Gary Kelly, whatever his name is, the Southwest Airlines CEO, is a liar. Did everybody just watch him and Jim Cramer? He's a liar. What role does vaccine, you know, whatever people pissed off at Southwest, had anything to do with these cancellations? Zero was the man's answer. He's a liar. Don't do this whole, well, he's a country bumpkin and he's got an accent. He's a good guy. He's a piece of shit. I know probably hundreds of Southwest Airlines pilots. I know, but one of my A4 instructors from Kingsville, Texas is a company man. Well, he's a, he's a chief pilot. Shall remain nameless. This is where we are in our country, folks. Did you see the government getting involved at least for a little bit, right? Until Southwest really threw them under the bus. Like, it was air traffic control and weather issues. So the weather was great all across the country. So weather issues only impacted Southwest. I mean, e even if you're slightly, mildly slow, you can see through lies. The weather's great. So why is an air every airline canceling hundreds of flights if the weather is bad? Well, two dudes or three dudes walked out of the air, tr the, the Tracon in Jacksonville. And it crippled flights. Uh, last time I flew into Fort Lauderdale last night or Miami or Palm Beach, American is down here. Uh, JetBlue's down here. He's a liar, folks. I can't stand this type of shit. They really do think you're stupid. It absolutely has everything to do with the jab. Two days ago, 
the Southwest Pilots Association, the union, filed a federal lawsuit a, an emergent, requesting an emergency injunction. Why do you ask? Because they have what's called a contract between the pilots and the company. And when the company unilaterally says, you have to do this or you're fired, it's against the law. RLA, the Railway Labor Act, or whatever the hell it's called. I'm, I'm digging back to my airline days, folks. It's illegal. You can't unilaterally say, you have to do this. It's, it's not, no. So the union is absolutely a thousand percent correct because let's, let's go down, let's talk to, uh, let's talk to a pilot right now. Me, you got to get the jab or you're fired. Uh, okay, well, what if I get it and as a result of the jab, I get sick and then I can't fly and then I lose my FAA medical and I'm a cap 30 year captain. Um, I, I, what happens? Get the jab or you're fired by the state. No, no, we need to talk through this shit. It's a violation of labor law. And whoever just posted that, isn't it funny how Democrats disappear? The second, it's a pilot's union that takes an action. Because pilot's unions ain't the Screen Actors Guild or Jimmy Hoffa, the Teamsters, Local 54, where I parked cars in Atlantic City. So Democrats disappear. And let's get back to that cuck, Andrew Ross Sorkin. We bailed out these Southwest pilots and now I saw it, uh, a screenshot. I think Donald Trump retweeted it or whatever. They're calling these pilots doing this slowdown domestic terrorists. So again, women and men who flew combat missions in Afghanistan or Libya or Syria or Iraq are domestic terrorists for not wanting to put something in their body. This is spooling up to my strategic mindset of we're going to have an awful massive shit show. So ladies and gentlemen, Southwest Airlines is breaking law, but well, Wiz, the, the head of the Southwest Pilots Association, Captain whatever his face is, says the pilots aren't doing this. Fucking duh, because that would also be illegal. <laughs> and violating the contract. If the head of the pilots union is like, yes, our pilots are doing this on purpose, Southwest Pilots Association would be in breach of the contract and breaking the law. So here we are in this stupid standoff where people get on TV and lie. The head of the union is lying and the head of Southwest is lying. Welcome to America where people just lie. Gary Kelly saying zero, he's a liar. So there you go. But anyway, this is starting to, um, you know, uh, s to sneak in here, right? Yeah, American. Uh, so, guys, if, if this gets bigger, did you see the truck drivers are starting to do this shit? Like, well, wait a minute. Pilots? I'm a, I'm a damn truck driver. Pilots are a truck driver. We, I ain't getting this jab. I sit in a damn cab by myself for 20 hours a day. You can kiss my ass. Ports are jammed, truckers go on strike, airline pilots work, or I'm using sick. Folks, it ain't against the, here's what's funny. I've been there, guys. I was in the FedEx Pilots Association, APA at American, then the Allied, whatever. The union can't say, hey, man, call in sick. They all, we all kind of wink and nod at each other like, <coughs> I got a month worth of sick days, and guess what? Crew scheduling. I'm oh, I feel some chills. I might have COVID. I'm going to go hide for 14 days. So all these awful Americans who have been all over social media ripping Southwest pilots apart, these men and women might be the last line of defense between you and tyranny. Not only is a company just trying to break the law and lie to us, well, whatever, man. I'm, I'm not going to rant more about this, but it's just I can't even. Yeah, Amtrak, truck drivers. This is I, I love this. The headline. The market might soon start worrying how contagious sick house might prove to be. All of my buddies, almost all of them are in the airlines, man, except for my financial connections, obviously. 
Yeah, exactly. Goose, goose. The other piece of this retirement is retirement eligibility. Lots of pilots are close to retirement and they don't care if Southwest takes action. They will just take their sick leave and fade away. That's what senior pilots do. They usually sit there and bank all this stuff so they don't have to fly for the last year of their career. Guess what they're doing? Southwest and Gary Kelly can lie all they want about how it's not this. These guys are allowed to use what is contractually given to them. I'd be doing the same thing right now. I support the pilots of Southwest Airlines. David, I appreciate the insight. Not something we learn about anywhere else. You got it, man. That is exactly right. So it's awful. Gary Kelly lies. The FAA lies. Well, the FAA actually told the truth a little bit. So folks, if so Southwest Airlines said it was the weather and air traffic control. Why did they lie? Here's why they lied. Because if they said it was due to what? Cruise? They got to refund all of you. Look on your ticket, man, on page 97 of your ticket. It says what? Weather or air traffic control, acts of God stuff, you can suck it. If we have a bunch of crews and it's our fault, we have to eat it. That's why they lied, folks. And that's why the government initially was like, uh, the weather ain't bad and nobody walked out in air traffic control. And then I saw the FAA do a flip. Why? The government corrected the government because they do not want the appearance of what? An entire 9,000, I'm not going to say 9,000, but let's say several thousand uh, pilots being able to paralyze a company by saying, no, they want to shove this down your throat, man. You do what we say. We're in China, folks. We're in China. The, they yet haven't been doing what? At the end of a bayonet. We're not Australia right now, folks, because we have a Second Amendment. Jamie Dimon, let's move on. I'm sorry, that, 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 that rant had to happen. People pissed off in the airports and shit like that. I'm like, these men and women are fighting for your freedom. I mean, at, at its most basic level, folks, we're not talking about a lady in a cubicle or a dude, you know, slinging boxes. We're talking about women and men whose careers protecting hundreds of people sitting behind them could be over if you if you jab them and they're sick and we can't get a medical license. Southwest, I guarantee you, is going to go, well, that ain't our fault, the drug maker. That ain't our fault, the government. That ain't our fault. It's nobody's fault, folks. If you're a Southwest pilot and you get the jab and, God forbid, something bad happens to you, you're shit out of luck. Would you do that? Raise your hand and tell me you would. I wouldn't. So, you know, and, and anytime we've seen, I've been in there, I've been to FedEx and American, any, anytime, here's what's funny, is the, the women and, uh, and men, uh, the flight crew from the cabin crew to the flight deck crew, uh, they're good people, right? They try and help out. I remember, you know, shut down engine to save gas. And I mean, we wanted, you want to help. It's your damn company. But when the company starts sticking it to you, what do captains usually say? Fly the contract, man. Fly the book. Because if you actually did everything that's in, like kind of to the letter, it would be an absolute shit show. <laughs> it just wouldn't, the airlines would collapse. So the airlines actually rely on crews doing a little bit above and beyond to make it all work. Whenever You don't need to do a ordered work slowdown. All the union has to say is fly the contract and then it turns into a shit show. I could do a whole thing on the airlines, guys. Exactly. 10 knot taxi days. I am taxiing at a slow speed for safety. Yeah, Karen knows what I'm talking about. If if crews really wanted to screw an airline, they just have to do what the airline tells them to do. I love it. All right, let's get going. Jamie Dimon yesterday. I love this, guys. I'm on the uh, – Mara has destroyed me, like 120 grand. I'm out on Mara because I just – you want to talk about a, a, an expensive foray? That's, that's me. 
But now I'm going to sit here as I might, I'll, I'll take some shots of opportunity and stuff, but I'm not revenge trading. I don't feel the need. I, I like actually looking at that, my portfolio to go, that's one of your biggest forays and it was a failure. I like looking at reminders like that. But now as a disinterested observer, this is comical. The, who was it? Uh, uh, Nassim Tlaib, no, whatever his name is. Tlaib, the guy that predicted the black swan event. Jamie Dimon, you, you talk to anybody, quote unquote, again, I'm going to, I'm going to blaspheme myself, the smart money, the old smart money says it's a Ponzi scheme. There's no worth to it. The only reason it has worth is because people quote, believe it has worth like anything, guys. We laughed last week that Joe Biden literally could write a trillion dollars and send a post it to the mint. It's worth $2 trillion. Right? We laughed last week when Janet Yellen might have to print an emergency trillion dollar coin. This coffee could be worth a trillion dollars because you have to believe in it. Right? Oh my God, Karen, that's a good one. My old buddy used to delay flights because the stickers were worn off or unreadable. American Airlines 2012, fly the book, crippled them in two weeks. That's exactly right, guys. So, you know, unions don't have to wink and nod and go, hey, let's do a let's do a sick out for uh, just all the airline has to do. I'm sorry. The union has to do is just send out an email that says, ladies and gentlemen, fly the contract. That's code word to the company like ah, we're fucked. They're actually going to do what they're supposed to be doing, which means we're in a lot of trouble. I love it. But anyway. Um, I get, I get the crypto thing, guys, my L39 buddy five years ago, I do wish I had listened to him because like the tulips craze, if I had gotten into the beginning, I'd be a hell of a lot richer, but the reason for its existence, and I'm just sticking with Bitcoin. Cause he was like, dude, I have this wallet and it's peer to peer and uncle Sam doesn't know anything. I'm like, <laughs> what? Well, no, it's blockchain and it's peer to peer and nothing and blah. I'm like, you're an idiot. Enjoy the next year to two of trading and I hope you make a lot of money. That's over with. It says it on your IRS form now. Did you trade crypto this year? Please do me a favor and hide all of your crypto earnings from Uncle Sam and see how well that works out for you. I hope it does. It won't. Do not hide anything from Uncle Sam. But I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, you have got to, um, you, you got to be careful with this shit. Jamie, I love Jamie Dimon because he did this. He's like, I think it's, it's not, it's worthless. But I'm not a spokesperson. I don't care. It makes no difference. I love this. But I want, I, I you know, I don't want to be a spokesperson. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. Our clients are adults. They disagree. That's what makes a market. I love that. So if they want to have access, buy yourself Bitcoin. We can't custody it, but we'll give you the pipes. I love this, man. This is just, this was great. And, you know, he's like, well, one of the reasons he's like, hey, man, you know, a China, you know, if, if some country wakes up, and makes it illegal. India did for a little bit, then came back. China did for, I, I don't know where we are with China, Bitcoin or crypto. I'm lost. Cause they keep trying to roll out their digital yuan um, <clears throat> and they keep failing. You didn't hear it here first. You've probably heard it here everywhere if you trade crypto. Crypto will be illegal in China, period. And if you haven't heard that here, uh, anywhere, you just heard it from me. It will be illegal guys. Did you not? Pay attention to the past three to four months. Anything that ain't China is gone. They just said we're taking over everything in this country as far as the press. But I'll still be allowed to trade Cardano in Shenzhen. No, you won't. So somebody tell me about this. Somebody tell me that I'm wrong with crypto. I want to be. I love when people make money, man. I love I love my crypto Scientologists, but folks, Jamie Dimon, let, let me give you the cliff notes for this interview. Yeah, I'll give you the link. Jamie Dimon says buyer beware. That's all I'm saying to you as well. Uh, I, you know, again, my L39 buddy, who JetBlue captain, 
Mr. Crypto for the past couple of years. Great. That's how Ponzi schemes work. The initial people do great, and then they keep telling all the other people about how great it's going to do. I don't believe in the value of the U.S. dollar. As, as, a, as a smart man, Jenny, I just kind of know it's all bullshit. But until this entire world recognizes, which it might one day, that the U.S. dollar is bullshit, you, have, you believe in it. I'll never forget the Billions episode with Chuck Rhodes, who shut down the upstate New York mi bit miners. What do you say? They're like, the dollars, you know, it's not even worth the paper it's printed on. He's like, it's backed by Rhodes, uh, military, and the full faith and credit of the United States government. Not some Japanese dude in a cave that came up with a currency. And if you believe in crypto, you know that there are literally thousands of currencies. So anyway, one more time, I'm going to say this, and you can take this to the bank. In a showdown between made-up currency and a government and central banks, you know who I'm going to root for. I'm sorry. I actually root for this one. You know who's going to win. There's a difference. In my flight suit, I love the fact that people can get rich off of this thing. But put my Gordon Gecko suit on like Jamie Dimon is doing. He's like, it's worth zero. Buyer beware. But hey, man, God bless you. Bless your heart. I meant to brief you on this last week. There are ETFs now, ladies and gentlemen, who track Nancy Pelosi's husband. Going back to when she entered Congress, Nancy Pelosi's hedge fund. She doesn't have one. Nancy Pelosi's husband, the way he trades, is like the top is in the top five hedge fund performance in decades. I'm gonna let that sink in. Actually, it's it's you gotta follow this Twitter account, man. Nancy Nancy Pelosi trades. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it this one? No. No, there. Uh, which one? I follow one of these. But they blast out all uh, the trades that Nancy Pelosi's husband is making. She doesn't trade. Her husband does. We've been tracking their performance, and every single stock she has bought in the last two years has gone up significantly. Trades, made by lawmakers or their family members, are required to be reported within 45 days. Can somebody tell me in the blockchain Scientology group here, how come it's not immediate reporting? Members of Congress get – they could be in and out of a stock before they actually have to tell us about it. Isn't this disgusting? CrowdStrike, Tesla before they pass uh, those laws. Google when they weren't gonna go after big tech. The timing on all of her trades is gross. But good work if you can get it, guys, right? Amazon, since we're in half of a solo Amazon brief. Um, it's reported, Rick, to the, uh, I forget the name of the congressional office and I forget where it's published. That's why on Twitter, search, the, search Nancy Pelosi's trades and there's a bunch of, I think there's an ETF, guys. Oh, look at this. Everybody on social media all over. Southwest Air Gary Kelly asked how much vaccine protest contributed zero. Oh, this one's going to be, I'll bet you this thread's great. I love, I, I love the people in the CNBC. <laughs> zero, like this zero? $3.5 trillion bill is zero. I love this. Zero. Anyway. Um, zero. I love it. Well, it, guys, again, when you see this flag, here's your typical liberal. Anecdotal photo, photo is not anecdotal or is anecdotal. I love Democrats, man. Remember when the guy, the African-American was running for governor of California? And a white lady in an ape mask. You can't make this up. A white lady in an ape mask 
throws an egg at him. Twitter? That clearly was a Republican just trying to stir up trouble. These people are, are sick. So underneath uh, all the people that said that, I'm like, so the next time I see a bunch of KKK members running through my neighborhood burning crosses, I can say that they're Democrats stirring up trouble? Oh, Trump's <laughs> no. <laughs> Idiots. Larry Elder, thank you. Ooh, Andrew might have done. Andrew gets a gold star. Hang on, guys. I did not. I didn't look at this, Andrew. So I'm glad you did. Stand by for this. Let's see if he found it. There we go. Clerk. Yeah, it's the clerk's office. Wow. There we go, guys. There's a Nancy uh, Pelosi. Where is it? Search reports. Find your representative. I love this. This is great. Yeah, I'll give you the link. Andrew got it. Yep. Hang on, guys. Search reports. Okay, hang on. Folks, if this were John Boehner, Newt Gingrich, if this were a congressional, um, if this were, a, I, I'm sorry, a Republican, um, the, the media would be talking about it every day. Nancy Pelosi, not a word. Apple, Tesla, Disney, Alliance, Bernstein, Holding. I'm sure that was some insider trade. This is fantastic, guys. I'm not kidding you. Look at this. Between a half a million, it look, and they put the amounts. Of course, they don't put the exact dollar amount, but unbelievable. Yeah, I'm going to keep this up here. Um, hang on. Let's see if I'm – we got to move. I got to talk about Amazon, Nancy. Uh, look at this. I mean, it, it's just, it, it, it's a thing. I thought I saw an ETF or somebody was making an ETF. They're making a, a, a Pelosi ETF. That's all right. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit. Anyway, Amazon, uh, Amazon, just like we predicted was going to happen, uh, buying their own container ships, man. Look at this. If my internet would look at this, man, they got their own ships. So I told you that I'm a little kind of concerned about what's going on for the next couple months. Uh, if anybody can get out of the mess, it's Jeff Bezos and Amazon or Jay, whatever his name is, the new dude. Um, but uh, let me give you the bottom line up front. I could not be more bearish right now, and I want to get out of Amazon. That might be shocking to you. It shouldn't. Even Amazon, with buying their own boats and this and everything like that, can't I, – I, I was texting with one of my buddies this morning. He's like, dude, people can't even afford a turkey, right? Every day on social media, you see people posting about gas prices or this or that, and holy shit, I can't afford whatever. I, I don't feel it, guys. I can be completely wrong. I'm underwater a lot on Amazon, man. This thing has not um, gotten off the mat. Exactly. If you cannot beat the logjam, buy the logjam. So I get it. But as so, soon as you, you, know, you say the word buy, folks, even Amazon, they're going – what happened a couple of weeks ago when we sat here? Amazon announces they're going to have to raise – you know, wages to hire people and the stock imploded. I'm like, duh. But if they're going to have to spend a ton of money, guys, to buy the log jam, it's going to hurt earnings. They're still going to print money, folks. But remember, for all you guys who joined Solo Amazon, we've seen, you know, the hockey stick. That's what their annual revenue looks like. It's straight up. It might start doing this. Still obscene and insane, but you know, when you're expecting 
insanity and you just get crazy, it's not bullish, guys. So um, this is not a bullish sign. They're like starting Thanksgiving now. How many years do we bitch about this? Like in August, the Halloween decorations come out. Around Halloween, the day after Halloween, Christmas. Not even we skip Thanksgiving. So I'm not I'm not bullish, guys. I am completely bearish right now. Haven't felt this one in a while. Why? One of the main reasons is this, 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 this did not happen. We are not in by the dip mode. We are in between moving average mode where it's a shit show. There is a world of hurt in between the 100 day on the S&P and the 200 day. I want somebody, I'm going to put my glasses on. I want to, well, I mean, look at Amazon. Hold on. I mean, it, it's it's below all the moving averages and stuck there. We had this triple bottom, which we thought was going to be bullish right here, and then it failed at the uh, at the 200 day. Toilet paper is not available at Costco every day now. Wow. Um, Walter, if I have Jan 22 calls on Amazon, can I sell calls for protection against them? I wouldn't say sell calls for protection. I'd say sell calls to make some money. Walter, you absolutely can. Um, Dennis, I've had to cancel a few orders lately because they couldn't provide product. Folks, we're, we're trying to paint the house. The guy that we've known for years, he laughs at us almost every day when we call. He's like, there's no paint, Wiz. I'm like, dude, he's like, I can't air paint. He's like, I, I, we can't get paint, which means he's not getting paid, right? So uh, let's get back to the can I sell calls? The answer is absolutely yes. However, comma, can you afford to sell calls? What do I mean by that? Right now, I'm short to Friday. I had to roll these up from last week. <clears throat> I'm short these 3350 calls out to Friday. I'm selling weekly calls against my long Amazon. You ready for this? Don't freak out. What's my max potential loss? And that is absolutely wrong. <laughs> I'm short these calls. E-Trade has been a shit show. Thank you, E-Trade, the second time I click. Absolute infinity. When you sell calls, folks, now let's just talk about naked calls. When you sell naked calls, Infinity is your max potential loss. Now, these, I'm going to say, technically are not naked. Why? Because I got 3,500 calls and 3,900 calls out to Jan and out to Jan. So I hate using this. It's a hybrid term. Are they covered? If I sold these calls, are they covered? Eh. I'm not going to sit here in our time remaining and get into Delta and the Delta of these front month call options versus blah, 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 a lot of math. Here's a summary slide. Hopefully, if Amazon gets on a horse and starts riding, these calls make more money than you're losing with these. But that's not necessarily the case, especially when you're selling something out the Friday that was close to at the money. Very long am, uh, rambling answer to your short question. Can you sell calls against your Jan 22s to bring in some coin? Yes, comma, I don't know if you can do that, meaning if you have the margin. You're looking at my personal account, which has portfolio margining, okay? Completely different than, quote, a regular margin account. So again, I can't give investment advice, individual investment advice. I'm not a registered investment advisor, a broker dealer. I don't play one on TV. You guys all know that. You should absolutely be paper trading to try all this stuff. But if you wanna pick up the phone and call your broker and say, hey, talk me through this. I'm long these calls, but I wanted to bring in a little scratch. Can I do it? Or you could also, uh, another quote, safer way to do this is what? Let's talk through this. Let me, how do I wanna talk through this? Let's look at the chart. You are long. I am long some calls. Let me close this. I'm long what 3,500s and like 3,900s. Okay. 
So <clears throat> if you wanted to sell some upside calls, actually, let, let me get rid of these. If you wanted to just sell some upside calls out to Friday to bring in some money, but your broker's like, holy shit, man, the risk on those is through the roof. What could you do? Somebody answer me real quick. What could you do to kind of, I will use this word, hedge in case it does go. You could buy, right? If you sell some, you know, close to at the money calls here, what could you do out up here? Buy some way out of the money calls, like lottery calls, right? And that will actually, when the, the your brokerage platform does the math, they're going to be like, oh, he's short these calls are unlimited risk. Oh, but he bought a couple upside calls up here in case it rips through there, right? So technically, yeah, it's a spread of sorts, right? Exactly. Um. So that that's exactly, that's what you could call it, a wide a bear call calendar spread. I hate giving labels to stuff. It's like giving God a label. That once you try to label God, you already take away from it. So I hate, it. Goose is right with the tactical name, but let's just think through it. I own some calls down here or wherever they are. I wanna bring in some money each week. You guys know I have been. I usually do some pretty good work with Amazon short calls uh, and doing bringing in some serious coin every week but i am in a portfolio margining account so i can deal with that i don't like it and it will suck but i can everybody else or other people who aren't in a portfolio margining account you can sell those short calls up here and then buy one or two calls up you don't have to do the same amount like i'm short 10 whatever they are 32 50s out to this friday Maybe I buy five up here and I'm, I'm I'm not talking strikes or anything, guys. I'm just kind of doing basic. You got to sit there and play with it, right? I might actually close these. I mean, these things are as, as much as I can get out of them, right? I'm up 18 grand or whatever in these calls. Not really, though, folks, because remember, these were a roll. I had the 30, the 3300s on Friday. And of course, it closed whatever it was or the 3375s. Oh, that's what it was. Typical Amazon, man. I was literally on campus. Where is it? There's Friday, 3375, whatever Friday did. Oh, that was yesterday. Here's here's Friday. 3275. It closed at what? 3289. I was off by like, or no, what? 88, whatever. I was off by seven bucks, man. But I rolled since I was walking around campus and now to sell coverage. I called actually. I'm like, dude, just roll these calls up and out a week. I went up and out to the 3250s. And then this happened. If Amazon breaks this, what's that? 3235, man, it's look out below. So let's get back on track. A couple things. Um, I did not get filled yesterday on the Amazon bull put spread that I sent out. I was trying to sort of think about it. Let's go back to over here to Amazon. This is not bullish, guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk through that, but we're in solo and primary. Couple things. I just gave, I just made a formal announcement. I am not bullish on Amazon out to here. Here's your second formal announcement. I am not bullish on the market out to here. Here's what we're going to do in the next couple minutes. Somebody give me the bullish case out here and tell me I'm wrong. Go. I want to look in the chat box. I'm going to see who says it first, and I'm going to laugh. I'm not going to laugh. I'm going to uh, support what you said, your red team, and then shoot it down. Go. Too many bears. China implodes. No, I'm talking about the bullish case. Somebody give me one reason to be bullish. I want to see if anybody says it. Ted, Amazon is uniquely positioned to deal with the shit show. Eh, it's going to cost some money. Debt ceiling raise. It already happened, Catherine. Uh, they kicked it down to uh, December. Santa Claus rally. Ain't no Santa Claus if all you can afford is coal. Stimulus floods the market with cash. Cinema and Joe Manchin have said no. Infrastructure deal. Uh, they buy more ink for money. Seasonal. Uh, Anybody tell me what happened two years ago in October through December? 
the market went down 20%. Delta COVID is over, says Fauci. Richard, that will never happen. Fauci will be on TV for the rest of the man's existence with different uh, stuff. William Shatner discovers a new planet. I am bullish on that. Yep, COVID is a new industry, folks. I predicted this subtle plug in my book called The COVID Crash. Vaccine passports and apps and this and all, it's turned into a moneymaker. Merck is charging 40 times more than it costs to make the damn pill. Here's what I want to get to, guys. A couple of you said it, and I and then Wiz says so. Exactly. Peter. So Sandra's going with the everybody's bearish, which means it's bullish. Folks, I think in my over three decades of, of doing this, the contrarian thing works one time out of 10. So 10% of the time, the, well, everybody's bullish, so I'm going to be bearish works. If you traded like that, you'd be broke. <clears throat> Peter kind of nails it. And I'm surprised a lot of people didn't say this. What's going on out here in November? Nobody, I, I asked you to give me one reason. I think I saw one or two people post it. I said, give me one reason. Sandra knows that. Give me one reason to be bullish. Let's look at the left side of the chart with SPX. Why did we have a reason to be bullish? Every one of these inchworms. Boing, 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 boing. F-E-D. Jerome Powell said, you're all stupid. It's transitory inflation. We all looked at each other and said, we're pretty sure that dude's stupid. He doesn't buy his own milk or fill up his, his Lincoln Town car. Midterms. No, no, no. There's no real elections going on, guys. That's next year. So, folks, the only saving grace, uh, and again, we can go from left to right. Let's go across the country from L.A. crowded port. You look at the satellite picture, man. It looks like the the fleet in Star Wars. Uh, it's just it's massive. COVID, supply chain issues, uh, uh, airlines, trucker strikes, folks. I, I, Kamala Harris, for all her cackling jokerness, nailed it a month ago. She's like, I do my Christmas shopping early because she knows what's coming. The only reason I would be bullish is because in November, when everybody says Jerome's going to tighten, he doesn't. I'm going to let that sink in. I actually, so every, somebody, we all laughed. Come on, everybody laugh with me. Evergrande caused this. No, it didn't. I have it on good authority, the people I talk to. This, all this profit taking in here after this massive run is what? This is billions, folks. This is Axe Max Capital. This is the market actually telling JP, you're not going anywhere. Somebody tell me in this room if you believe that if we got this type of crap going on in November, that Jerome Powell announces a taper. Boom. Now, I'm going to believe that Jerome Powell has good intentions and he's just not trying to keep his job. Do you think the man's going to taper in November? Yeah, I know all the kids and the actors were uh, in her video was were actors. Is everybody following me? I, after doing a, you know, going to the mountains, taking a nice break, seeing family, talking to, it's cool when you can walk on a mountain dirt road and see the leaves changing with a cup of coffee and talk to folks. It like gets your mind right. I think I'm going to do that to Aspen again this year, do another week, solo week. But anyway, I've come to the conclusion. So this is why I'm absolutely bearish. All the things that I've railed against during this brief. Absolutely. The only, and, and again, I'm the guy that wants to punch me in the face with the whole, I can't believe I'm actually saying this. We're in a market where the Fed, we're relying, folks, the market, 
somebody show me last a week and a half ago, we're going to default on our debt and we're all going to die. Mitch McConnell, coward. Well, we'll raise the debt ceiling. Did, where's the relief rally in here? It was right there, guys. I said, what? We're going to have a relief rally and it's a dead bad bounce. And that's exactly what happened. So for all the f folks, the, the biggest risk to this market right here was what? We default on our debt. How many times did I tell you it's not going to happen? Now, Mitch McConnell, what did they kick the can down to? December 3rd? Mitch McConnell has said he wrote a, a stinging letter to Joe Biden. If McConnell can do that, he's like, we're done. That was your get out of jail free card. Now you literally have months heads up to get this done because I'm not going to do it again. So we might actually have Jerome in November going, well, uh, the Republican, he's apolitical, whiz. Come on, man. Pull this leg into place, jingle bells. I'm giving you my mind here, folks, based on a lot of talking with folks, a lot of experience. I am not bullish at all. I would be bearish for the next couple months. The market will not give us a relief rally. It will look like that one with infrastructure spending. Why? Because we're all getting hammered with taxes. It doesn't cost a thing. I, I love it. If your rent is 1500 bucks a month, but you worked and you got paid 1500 bucks, your rent was free. That's what Democrats believe, folks. That's how stupid people think. You got it, Goose. I'm telling you, all my market participants are like this. I've. I don't want to be right, man. You guys know with a lot of the times when I go, I don't want to be right. It's bad. It's coming. Eight months ago and in the fall or whenever, I told you we are a year to two years away from the big one and a massive recession. Business cycle, part of it. Joe Biden, most of it. Taxes, open border, inflation, supply, the only bullish China. The only bullish thing I have on my radar is Jerome Powell. How many of you want to bet on that? And that's November, guys. What is it, October 12th? We got a month of what's on the screen right now. So let me leave you with this. I'm sorry I went long. We, haven't, we didn't talk yesterday. Trade in and out. This is not – so let, let me do this again. I did this last week, and a lot of you – I got some nice emails. This. I am in 50% cash right now. Half of my portfolio is cash. That's exactly, no, it isn't exactly where I want to be. I actually want to be more cash. I might go 70, 30, 80, 20, and the only 20 would be Amazon because I could be wrong. Whiz, Amazon bought all the supply chain issues. It didn't cost them anything, and they have a massive fall. Great. I'm going to keep some powder some chess pieces on the table in case that happens. Otherwise, cash. Cash is a position, folks, right now. If you want to trade, hedge, or trudge, on your screen, folks, is Armageddon. Between the 100 and the 200, man, if you just listen to me and you're like, holy crap, man. Because I wasn't holy crapish before. Here's where I got holy crapish. I'm like, we're not buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. I didn't tell you to buy the dip here. All of these were strong bounces. This one, we got down here and we kind of hemmed and hawed. I'm like, oh boy, this ain't good. Evergrande. I don't even know what that is. Jerome Powell prints $120 billion a month. Evergrande is a week of Jerome Powell's printing, let alone what the Chinese can do. So enough rambling. SPX puts, if you need them. VIX calls, smoke them if you got them. Or cash. I on my screen is exactly what I am doing, right? In my my own personal portfolios, man, I am Amazon only and half cash. And that's not where I want to be. I want to be more cash. Does that make sense? Let me clean up with some. Cause I have a noon brief. I gotta I gotta cut for. Oh, let me answer a bunch of questions here. Goose, I'm going to say that we at TGO have been talking about this very scenario for months. The Fed is carrying the market. You got it, Goose. We nailed it. Karen, uh, did you see? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Hillary came out of her hole. I'm not out of politics yet. Wouldn't that be great? Barack Hussein Obama. Joe, 
retire, man. You've been in here for four decades. It's Hillary's turn. Donald Trump, Hillary Smackdown. Joe Biden, idiot. Hillary Clinton comes in to save the day. Uh, Bob, so we like the VXX bull put spreads through today. Uh, so, Bob, that's what I'm saying. Trade. If you if you if you're skilled at doing this, guys, and for the past what three or four weeks in this chop, we've been doing that. SPX bear call spread, SPX bull put spread. You can trade in and out of this, but you have to be able to sit here because literally we're we're like a bottom third of the TV or a breaking news announcement away from either a shit show or a rally. I don't like doing that. I like enjoying my life, going to yoga, going to the gym, going to this meeting. But if I'm sitting here, which usually I do it on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, so that's why you need to join the investment clubs. Uh, I, you know, take some shots in SPX, although kind of Amazon's my new SPX. Graham, supply chain issues are uh, a problem in China, manufacturers with electricity shortages. You got it, Graham. I forgot even to mention that. That's a shit show as well. Another reason they want to go after the crypto is they need the electricity, man. Uh, I'm going to say if you trade, trade quality with high cash flow companies. Cheating, will earnings play a role? Absolutely. Um, Cheating. 11.11, make a wish. Cheating, I hope earnings are fantastic and the market has a rip your face off rally. Hope ain't a strategy. You do not trade off of hope. I don't feel it. This last quarter, folks, was still, and, and remember, and I saw a good, uh, was it the Wall Street Journal or whatever? Uh, no, it's like the New York Times. I was forced to read this up in Vermont, um, which was shocking in the New York Times. They're like, if you think the jobs numbers on Friday were bad, how about firing hundreds of thousands of employees? For a year and a half, hospital workers were our new veterans, were, were our new Afghanistan, were our warriors. Now we're firing them. They've been around COVID for a year and a half, and now you're going to force them to get vaccinated or fire them. How about some rich dudes or ladies stand up hosp hospitals that just are staffed with those people? But if you think the Friday jobs numbers sucked, how about now? You're fired. You're not getting a jab. You're fired. You're fired. Everybody's fired. Fired, 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 fired. Holy shit. So cheating. I don't think these earnings calls, it, folks, I could be wrong. Somebody tell me how a CEO can get on an earnings call right now and go, the future looks great. Love or hate Donald Trump, at least CEOs could go, the business environment's friendly. If I were a CEO getting on an earnings call, what would I do? Lower the net. Why? Because Wall Street, your standard Wall Streetism, if you can't hit the ball over the net, what do you do is you lower the net. So CEOs, COOs, CFOs on these earnings calls would be wise to do what? And, I t and I'll talk about this uh, maybe tomorrow. CEOs are furious at who? Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren. They all bowed. They tried to be woke. We're going to be as woke as we can. Please don't come after us. How many times did I tell you? You bow to the crowd. All they do is take a cleaner swipe with your head off. You don't bow to the crowd. So now I'm all hearing from some of my consulting friends that are like, CEOs are getting ready to throw the administration under the bus. We're not some evil company raising prices. It's the president, the administration. That's who to blame. I'm just a business owner. I can't even make ends meet. So cheating, long rambling answer to your short uh, question. I don't think earnings are going to be good. I'd love to be wrong cheating because then maybe Amazon would go up. Serge, a couple more questions I have to go, guys. I literally have a meeting uh, for some flights. Should we sell to lock in losses to get the cash? Serge, I cannot answer that, man. Serge, that is a question you have to answer. This is why I give a brief like this, right? I'm not going to tell you what to do. You sign for your own airplane, man. You are the pilot in command of your aircraft. This is why I give you an intelligence brief before you go fly. I'll teach you how to fly, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to make that decision, Serge. I'm going to say right now, if you're looking at my cockpit, which you are, I'd like to be in a little bit more cash. Is that okay? Good. I got a thumbs up from Serge. Tom, could Jerome taper then blame Biden tax hikes for the crash? I, I Jerome just doesn't strike me as a blame guy. 
Eli, I'm in the Amazon bull put spread posted yesterday. Do anything now. Eli, we're trade. This is chop all week, guys. If you don't like looking at these spreads like, hey, I'm up. Oh, shit, I'm down. Hey, I'm up. I'm down. I think Amazon has found if Amazon doesn't hold around here, guys, with this 3250, it's look out below. So, Eli, I would put a tight stop on it. And at whatever your SOP is, folks, whatever your standard operating procedure is for max potential loss or minimum loss, that would help you sleep better at night. But, you know, I'm going to I'm going to I'm not going to sit here now because I got to get going. I'm going to maybe uh, put on that bull put spread. Graham, coal is up over 200 percent. Iron ore jumped 5 percent one day. Oil over 80. That's what I call inflation. I agree. Andrew, when are you closing the Jan 21, 3,500 calls? Andrew, you'll be the second to know or the second people to know are in the investment clubs. I'm going to try and get out on a spike, man. Goose, remember this is OPEX, CHOPEX week too. On top of what Wiz is briefing, it's always choppier. You got it. Inflation numbers are coming out this week as well as CPI and PPI plus retail numbers on Friday. I agree with that, Cheaton. I did not cover that. I did not brief that. You nailed it. Friday, folks, you got Goldman Sachs. This is a big week, man. I would not, this, we're going to, look at Friday, man. Core retail sales, Empire State, UM consumer sentiment, business inventories, inflation, and then a Fed lieutenant. Wow. Friday's huge, guys. I would expect chop the rest of the week. One more time, I'm going to do this. If you don't like chop, which is not for the faint of heart, it equals this. That's what I can brief you. That's what I'm doing. I wish I was in more cash. Uh, I don't mind the Amazon guys because if anything, let's just like Goose said, right now it's either cash or a flight to safety. Run to Ma, man. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon. When in doubt, run to Ma. When things get ugly, cash has to go somewhere, folks. Hedge fund managers, institute that you don't get paid your bonus by sitting in cash. Trust me, I've been on the bonus committee, right? You need to trade. So where would you, what's the flight to safety right now? We're getting into the fall. Amazon usually prints money and they're buying all the supply chain stuff. They're at least going to, they're going to be the Twinkie and the cockroach if we get a nuclear bomb that goes off, uh, you know, in the next couple of weeks. Remember, we got Jerome. If he saves the day, yay, Santa Claus rally. Back into Amazon. But for now, Hopefully I did my job giving you a semi-decent brief and giving you what at least is in uh, my mind. Does that, does that help? My best trades in my life when I was in a position to double down on a stumble if I am long-term bullish. Exactly. Very well said. All right, guys, I got to go. Sorry I went. Flight to safety is apparently not gold right now. And Tom, that's – I don't want to jump on my Bitcoin real quick, but again, if things are – well, gold is a flight to safety. Bitcoin is a flight to safety. When things get hammered, everything gets hammered. When things are going up, everything's going up. So uh, uh, that's also one of the main reasons I'm really bearish right now is when nothing's a flight to safety, you got to be worried. I'm telling you guys right here on this 100-day moving average, if we don't hold here, it's look out below. Down to the 4,000 on – or I'm sorry, 4,300. And then, you know, if we don't hold there, it's it's here. And we got some great Elliott Wave. All that Fibonacci stuff uh, over in our uh, investment clubs that are smarter than me with that. So you're welcome, Sandra. All right, guys, I got to go. Have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Uh, make sure you hedge and God bless, guys. I'll see you tomorrow uh, for um, our, our weekly options. See ya.